Cheese, where do you want to start the biggest story of the week? Well, you know, I want to start in a more general capacity because um, you have uh, the midterm elections, which could put an end to some of the madness. And so the progressive left, which has made unbelievable strides under Biden, knows that. And now they're working in conjunction with the media to put out these phony polls that show the Biden administration surging in popularity and the Democrats in the generic ballot um, beating the Republicans and all of this. It's not true, but it could have uh, an effect if it's not countered by people like you and me. Um, because we live in a country where half of the voters don't know anything. And I'm not being supercilious, Beck, arrogant. I'm, I'm not. It's just a fact. They live in a world of their own, um, a world they create out of cyberspace. They don't pay attention. Correct. They don't understand the big picture. They don't understand anything other than gas costs me more and so does bread. Mm-hmm. But that's all they understand. And, and so they're subject to unbelievable propaganda. But if Americans and, and I'm the Republican Party don't start to really up the urgency of this. Well, that of part this, of this is because of Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell has been right. heard to say that all we're going to do is just keep pointing out how bad the Democrats are. That way we won't lose anybody. Are you out of your mind? Mitch, I don't know what Mitch McConnell says. I don't care what he says. Um, there isn't a central force in the Republican Party now at all. And really, there isn't in the Democratic Party either, because Biden's not in control of his situation. But the Democratic machine allied with the media out of K Street in Washington, um, where these political action committees um, operate, uh, they are well organized and the Republicans aren't. So there isn't this urgency of message I mean, when you get a poll in Los Angeles that shows that a progressive left is well out in front of a guy who says, look, I'm going to clean up the town. And you just look at and that poll is probably accurate. And, and you say to the people in Los Angeles, OK, if this is what you want, this is what you got. You better get a gate and you better get a gun or security guards because yeah. this is totally out of control. And you're voting for it. You're voting for more of it. So that's the big story. I mean, it, it comes a point in history, and you know that I am the history guy, where a, a citizenry has to make a decision, a collective decision. Correct. And, and to you and me, it's so clear, right? It's so clear. There isn't two sides to the story, like there might have been with a Bill Clinton or even a Barack Obama. There aren't two sides to the story. This is a massive government takeover of... Everything in this country to diminish your personal freedom. That's what this loan thing's all about. I know. But if the government wants to run education pre K to postgraduate, they want to run it all so they can indoctrinate, just like you do with the Tuttle Twins ad, the students from cradle to when they're out. Yeah. This is a massive step toward that. We will pay. If you go along with us, if you agree with us, we'll pay for a lot of your education. They want to run personal protection, Second Amendment. They don't want you to have personal protection. This is the federal government. But most of all, they want to run the economy to tell you, the American citizen, what you can and can't have. This is all tied in to the progressive vision. I'm not a conspiracy guy. I mock most conspiracies. But you can see how this has happened in the past to other countries and how it is now being attempted in the United States. Yeah, I, I've never really liked this the most important election of our lifetime because I've heard it my whole life. This is this could be the last midterm election under the United States of America as we know it. Um, the Constitution by 2024 could be gone if there's no speed bump in Congress, there's they, we've got to stop this. The the um, the executive orders bill. I've I've always been uh, against executive orders when they are just they're, they're I mean we're writing we're not legislating anything anymore, and I don't like executive orders. Now 
I think executive orders have to be stopped. They just have to be stopped because we are in a dictatorship. When a president can do what he's trying to do, that's a dictatorship. But you're not going to stop it unless you have a Republican president Correct. elected in 24. Correct. There's no, there's no mechanism to stop it. So the founding fathers, they, they wanted a certain type of government, but they realized, all of them, in their personal letters and papers, that this might not happen. Okay, let me, uh, uh, let me go to uh, talking about personal papers. The um, redacted version of the Mar-a-Lago search warrant affidavit is supposed to be made uh, public. Now, redacted. Are we just going to see a bunch of pages with nothing but black bars over it? Yeah. I mean, look, what you can expect to see is a generalized rationale for the search. You're not going to get any names. You're not going to know what the person told the grand jury that Trump took. You're not going to know any of that. I don't even think you'll get specific documents that they were looking for. I don't think you're well, going to get that. Then there's nothing here. Then there, that's a nothing. Right. Better. Look, there's nothing in this whole thing. I know. For me. All right. This is just you know, it's another example of a government trying to destroy an individual, in this case, Donald Trump. So the government, the, the Biden administration is trying to destroy the man because they know that he still has um, a massive amount of support. And the Republicans who hate him are siding with the Democrats, which is really look. I know Trump better than anybody knows him, and I understand the eccentricities of the man mm -hmm. and that he did do damage to himself and the country mm -hmm. by being immature and undisciplined. And I told it to him more times than you can even imagine. But he governed the country well. He didn't. And that is not in dispute if you look at the border, if you look at the economic it, deals that he made again it, it can't be done by executive order it ha i no, mean we wouldn't be having this problem that. if it if we would have had republicans with a spine um let me switch uh topics here the fbi is losing credibility so rapidly um we have now the fbi not only with the mar lago thing but we also have fbi agents whistleblowers at the highest levels according to grassley saying that the FBI was ordered not to talk about Hunter Biden. It was they were ordered not to look at any of that. Um, the uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg was on Joe Rogan and he talked about how the FBI came to him and said, you know, there's going to be some Russian disinformation coming out. You know, don't don't run with it. So we have that. Plus, we also have the story that the people who stole Ashley Biden's uh, diary, which I'm all for them being arrested. They stole her diary. But this has really damning information in that uh, in that diary. They arrested those two people, but nobody's looking into the Hunter Biden thing. No arrests have been made on this at all. What is okay. the game plan of the FBI? It doesn't really matter, does it, Beck? So when... And I do believe this will happen. The House becomes Republican in November. And when that happens, and they're all sworn in in January, the first thing the Republicans will do is hold hearings on the FBI. Yeah. And then these whistleblowers will come in, and they'll say what they are going to say under oath. And that will be the end of the FBI's reign of power. OK, because it'll then be destroyed and charges, actual charges, might come from that. That's number one. But I, I have to That's tell you, Bill, I'm concerned that I think we're a, a country, the United States of blackmail. They have been monitoring these congressmen and everything else. And, you know, these congressmen are not the best moral character. Are you sure that? the the intelligence yes, agencies and you know look at I'm the power sure. that uh, that the fbi had under hoover yeah i mean i know it because i wrote killing the mob and everything is in there about it but it's that different age now so that's the fbi but here's the worst fbi thing you ready for the worst Beck? sure 
they didn't even look into who leaked the uh, Alito memo. Do you know that for sure? Yeah, because if they had, they would have made an arrest. There are only maybe 20 people. I know. Possibly. I know. And probably out of those 20 over maybe six or seven. But doesn't that... But doesn't that also fall to John Roberts because they do have their their own, at least, security force that can hire out uh, to investigate? I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, but I do know that if Trump were president and this happened, you would have had an arrest already. Yeah, you would have. OK, so when you see something that simple. All right, that blatant that you have a person inside the Supreme Court, there's not a lot of them, all right? And they can't find that person who leaked that memo in a historical fashion, which makes us a banana republic if we can't even keep secrets at the Supreme Court level. We're a banana republic. And so it is a terrible thing, but there is a resolution to this if the House goes Republican. Bill O'Reilly, a guy who knows how inflation works, uh, too many dollars chasing too few goods. Um, so you want to, the, the, uh, the economy is overheating. We got to slow down the economy. How do you do that? You make sure that people don't have the money to spend. What Joe Biden did uh, with, this, uh, with this bailout of people's student loans is absolutely incredible, Bill. Talk to me a little bit about the fallout of this, what you think, if it's going to stand, um, Nancy Pelosi flip-flopping, uh, and what it's going to do to the economy. Well, I can't predict the economy. Nobody can. We still have a big consumer engine here in this country. People are out. I was at Yankee Stadium for the Mets-Yanks on Tuesday, 50,000 people there spending money and buying you know, $8 hot dogs. So I can't predict the economy. Um, the loan forgiveness thing uh, will be uh, obliterated if there is a Republican president in 2024. Uh, that will go. It's a 10-year uh, expenditure. I estimate the expenditure, if the Democrats continue to hold power, to be at about $700 billion. Uh, the country cannot afford, obviously, to keep running up this kind of debt. Biden's not going to stop The only reason they do this is to buy votes anyway. Most of the money is wasted. It's so complex. Uh, People don't understand who's going to get the loan, how it's tied into the Department of Labor. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So wait, 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 wait. wait. You you say that this is going to has to wait till the next president. Do you not think this is going to go to the Supreme Court? No, I won't get there. Uh, Biden will veto any attempt to rein it in. Um, so, but you know, it's only really two years away now. Um, the, this is how fast time goes. I want to tell your audience back because I know you're very smart and, and big audience around the world. A couple of things. Um, I did an interview with Newt Gingrich this week on BillOReilly.com. Everybody should watch that interview. The way I interview these people is totally different than anybody else, and you know that. Yeah. Um, and I got a lot of micro information about really what's happening because Gingrich, he went through this. All right. The whole thing yep. um, in the contract for America and all that. So if you really want an astute analysis and, and get away from the propaganda you see on television and newspaper news, watch that. The second thing is that people are getting hopeless now and I shouldn't. So, yes, there are states like mine, New York and California and Illinois, almost irredeemable at this point. But also states like Florida and Texas and other places that are wising up, that are saying, you know, we want our freedom. We want to hold on to our personal freedom. I mean, people in California and New York, I'm shocked. They, they don't seem to respect their own personal freedom. They want a government to tell them, what they can and can't do every single facet of life. I've never seen anything like this ever. Why do you want to sacrifice your personal autonomy to an incompetent boob like Joe Biden? Why would you ever want to give Nancy Pelosi power over you or Donald Trump or any other politician? You know, you've got to fight for your independence. 
And we're not there because that message is being suppressed. Well, that message also, you know, Newt Gingrich had the contract for America. I have been ringing the bell in Congress and Senate for a year. Contract for America. How about a new one? They have to do it. And they won't do it. It's not going to happen this time around because there's no central leadership like Gingrich brought to the House. Well, then Kevin McCarthy should definitely not be the guy in the House. He should definitely not. If he can't get that done, then he should definitely not be the leader of the House. Period. Whatever. I don't follow that very closely because I don't I know the games that are played. Yeah, yeah. I want the American people to wise up to see what is happening in a non paranoic way and to discuss it with their children, their families, their friends and say, you know, this is bad. This is way worse than you think it is. When the powerful corporate media allies with the progressive left as it has is trouble. Bill O'Reilly from BillOReilly.com. Uh, if you watched his, uh, his No Spin Zone for years, he's still doing No Spin News every night. BillOReilly.com.